And we are back with another video. I'm the Mysterious Black Bandit. Welcome or welcome back to the soon to be number one true crime slash tragic events channel on YouTube where we find stories that haven't been told before. Thank you all so much for the support. And if you want to continue to help this channel grow, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe, and turn on all those notifications so you don't miss out on none of these videos. Now, in 2004, there was an incident that happened at a resident in Jackson, Mississippi that caused a lot of controversy throughout the United States and caused multiple news outlets to cover in the aftermath. In the story that we'll be talking about today, a man was found shot to death in his living room, but with the events surrounding this devastating circumstance, the person that was allegedly responsible for the murder is shrouded in mystery. Now, without further ado, let's get into the video. Alicia Hughes was born in 1971 and was raised by a single mother in Jackson, Mississippi. Growing up, she was considered to be a very smart but quiet child that stayed to herself. But by the time she made it to high school, she had grown out of that phase and became a very welcoming and friendly person that got along with basically everybody. Now, Brian Hughes, who also attended Lanier High, found Alicia to be a very attractive girl. So one day, while she was sitting in the classroom, he waited outside the door until the bell rang so he could approach her. From that day, Alicia and Brian had become very good friends and soon started to date. Now, once they graduated, they both went to Jackson State university to attend college but just a year in brian decided that he wanted to see the world so he enlisted in the air force while erica stayed there to get her degree in education so she could become a teacher this caused a huge argument between the two and led to them ending their relationship now over the years they tried several times to make this long distance relationship work but after a while alicia decided that she was going to focus on her teaching career and let brian go now, over the next few years, Alicia graduated from Jackson State University with a degree in education. Then she went to Mississippi State and got her master's. After applying at several school districts, Alicia finally landed a teaching job as a third grade teacher. By this time, Brian had returned from the Air Force and took a job working alongside his father at an automobile electrical supply company where he fabricated moldings for the vehicles. Within a week of his return, Brian had got back in contact with Alicia and the two started dating again as if they never broke up. Now this was the life that Alicia has always wanted. She had her dream teaching job. She had a beautiful wedding outside her parents' house with her high school sweetheart on top of having children and owning her own house. Now, throughout their marriage, there was confrontations and arguments, just like most married couples, but nothing too outlandish that they couldn't work out. But in 2004, something would happen that would shock the whole community. On June 3rd, 2004, Alicia, who was 32 years old at the time, had just closed up her third grade classroom for the summer, and then she heads over to her parents' house with the kids to spend some time with them since she didn't know what time Brian would get home. Soon afterwards, Alicia and the kids headed home because it was getting close to their bedtime, and when they got there, she put her daughters in the master bedroom with her. Now, on that night, Brian and his brother had gone out for some but with the work schedule he had, it wasn't uncommon for him to get home late, so she usually doesn't sit up and wait for him. Now, once the kids had fallen asleep, she had picked up a book and started to read it until she fell asleep. Then around 11 p.m. that night, she was awakened out of her sleep by gunfire. Now, at first, she couldn't make out if the sound was coming from the inside or the outside of the house. But all of a sudden, the house alarm came on, which made it clear that she may have had an intruder. So she got up and looked at the bedroom's keypad to disarm the alarm, but couldn't remember the security code. She then walks down the hallway while trying to look and see if she could see anybody out the window, but then in the corner of her eye, she sees what looks like a lying on the floor. As she got closer, she realized that it was just her husband lying on the floor next to the couch. Now, at first, she thought that he had just had too much to and one of his friends had probably brought him in and laid him on the floor. So she didn't think anything else about it. As she approached him, she tapped him on the back and asked him for a security code so she could turn the alarm off. But when she touched him, Brian began to moan and this is when she noticed that was everywhere. At that instant, the phone rang, which was the alarm company calling to see if they needed assistance. And this is when Erica told them her husband had been shot. Good evening. Okay, ma'am, I'm 
I'm going to call the police right back. Okay. Now, the police had arrived around 11.15 p.m., and when they came in, they saw Brian lying on the floor in the den in a pool of his own blood. The paramedics rushed in and tried to do their best to resuscitate Brian, but by this time, there was nothing they could do, and he was pronounced at the scene. 32-year-old Brian Hughes had been six times with a 45 caliber handgun in his arms, chest, and groin area. Now, with this being a crime scene, the investigators do exactly what they usually do, tape off the house and get as much evidence as possible and also question Alicia to get her statement. But with the news of her husband being dead, she was too devastated to talk, so the investigators allowed her to leave the house that night. Now, as soon as she left, the police started to suspect that she may have had something to do with this. They found a gun holster to the 45 caliber pistol, which was the same type of gun that was used to Brian underneath their bed, but the gun was nowhere to be found. In addition to that, the authorities believed that the shooter wasn't trained at all because of the trajectory of the bullets. Then they realized that the door required a key to be opened from the inside, but that key was found on the counter by the living room. So the very next morning, investigators had Alicia come in for questioning, and this is when they tested her hands for gun residue. Now, during this months-long investigation, authorities found out that Brian had two girlfriends on the side, and on the night that he was murdered, he had been talking to one of them moments before he was shot and killed. And this is when Alicia became a prime suspect for the killing of her husband. They found out that on the back of her left hand, the residue showed up positive. So this made investigators think that the reason Alicia shot and killed her husband was because she found out he was cheating. Then what made it even more suspicious, Brian had a 250,000 life insurance policy, which would have made it even better for Alicia to kill her cheating husband. On March 8, 2005, Alicia Hughes was arrested and charged with first degree murder for the shooting and killing of her husband and was taken to jail to await her trial day. Now, January 3, 2007, Alicia's trial was finally here, but before the trial even started, there was so much controversy about the prosecutor only having two black people on the jury. But regardless of that, it didn't stop anything. Once the trial started, the prosecutor started off by calling Alicia a stone cold who murdered her husband because of him having an affair and that large life insurance payout. They even called Brian's side piece, Robbie Rayford, to the stand, and she admits to having an affair with Brian for over a year and was the one on the phone with him right before he got shot. She stated that she heard him go in the door and set the alarm. Then seconds later, he abruptly got off the phone because his wife was present. Afterwards, the prosecutors then directed everyone's attention to where the shell casings landed, claiming that Alicia had moved them outside the door so it would look like it was a robbery. Now, Alicia's attorneys tried to convince the jury that there was no way to prove where Brian was in the house and with all the traffic from her family going in and out, the shell cases could have been kicked and moved throughout the whole process. Then as far as the gun residue, it was just a small amount found on her hand and if she fired all six shots, that residue would have been all over her. Now, with no eyewitnesses, no murder weapon, and no physical evidence, Alicia and her team felt that they had a good chance of not being guilty. But on January 9th, 2007, after a two-hour deliberation, the jury found Alicia Hughes guilty of first-degree murder, and she was sentenced to life in prison. Now, on February 22nd, 2007, just a month after her conviction, Alicia's attorney appealed the verdict and asked for the conviction to be thrown out due to the race and gender of the jury selected. Shocking just about the whole country, the judge agrees to Alicia's attorneys and overturns the conviction, citing the unfairness and discrimination of the jury selection. So after spending only five weeks in prison, Alicia was released on a $150,000 bail to wait on her new trial. Now, as you can expect, this gained national recognition and was being covered by all the big news outlets. One researcher said that for her conviction to be overturned in the state of Mississippi was something that has never happened before. Now, November 5th, 2007, her second trial had commenced and this time her jury was made up of mostly African-American women. From the start, Alicia's attorneys focused the whole trial on the credibility of the evidence that was found. Then on top of that, they found a neighbor that claimed they heard a car peeling out seconds after hearing the gunfire. Then with the evidence being compromised with all the people going in and out the house, 
the leading investigator admitted that the whole crime scene was done wrong and they didn't follow the normal procedures. Then on November 16, 2007, the prosecutor and defense team had made their closing statement. This lady could be convicted of murder. Is that each and every one of you have to vote guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. I guess the unknown intruder ran in, got her on the phone, said, stand there for just a minute, let me shoot you six times, once in the groin. At this time, the jury felt that there was enough reasonable doubt in the case for Alicia to be acquitted of the murder. I will read the verdict as the jury has handed to me. Would the defendant please stand? We, the jury, find the defendant not guilty. As the judge read off her not guilty verdict, Alicia and her attorneys let off a large sigh of relief as the prosecutors shook their head in disappointment. During the interview, one reporter asked Alicia if she was happy she got her life back. And her response was, yes, I'm definitely grateful for the not guilty verdict and to have my life back. But until the person who actually committed the crime is caught, I don't feel like I'll have my life back totally the way that I want it back. Now, as a result, Alicia was fired from her teaching job with the Jackson Public School District, but she did receive the $150,000 life insurance payout for the death of her husband. As of today, Alicia Hughes is now living in with her two daughters and has decided to keep her marital last name. And that will bring this mysterious video to an end, my good people. This story was definitely something else, huh? Kind of like a soap opera or a show you have watched on TV before. But y'all let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And if you like content like this, go ahead and hit that like, subscribe, and turn on all those notifications for your boy. And until next time, stay mysterious, my friend.